My 3D printed designs made it into Big Brother Brazil. Yeah, the biggest reality show on national TV. You would think that was a peak, right? But that moment was actually the beginning of the end for my business with over 100 3D printers. And weirdly enough, it was also the best thing that ever happened to me. Today, I wanna take you back to my first 3D printing business, Casa Z. We sold tens of thousands of printed products. We had a viral hit, we scaled hard, but behind the scenes, I made mistakes that almost destroyed everything. And I want to share those mistakes with you, not just to tell you my story, but so that if you're building something in 3D printing, you can avoid those exact traps. Let's get into it. Mistake number one, building your business around a single winning product. Every business has that one product that takes off. Sometimes it's fast, sometimes it takes months, but eventually you will find your winner. For us, it was a product that sold incredibly well, responsible for over 80% of our revenue, and that's where the danger began. The 80-20 rule is real. 80% of your revenue will often come from 20% of your products. But if you're not careful, you'll start building your entire operation around that 20%. And that's what we did. We had dozens of printers, but most of them were dedicated to just one item. And instead of using the flexibility of 3D printing to test new ideas, we became locked into a system that only worked if that one product kept selling. We stopped experimenting, we stopped diversifying, we let the short-term success paralyze the long-term thinking. And that's the thing, every product has a life cycle. Demand fades, competition grows. At some point, that 80% becomes 50, then 20, then eventually nothing. We didn't notice the cliff until we were already failing. And the worst part, we had the perfect technology to prevent this. 3D printing is made for low risk testing, fast prototyping and launching in small batches. We just didn't use it that way. But here's an important disclaimer. You should absolutely double down on your winning product. Ride the wave, push hard, maximize the sale while the momentum is in your side. What you shouldn't do is stop testing. And while you're at it, don't fall into the trap of becoming the 3D printing everything store. Stay focused on your niche, go deep and not wide. Explore every variation, accessory and spin-off that your niche allows. The goal isn't to chase every trend. It is to build resilience within your focus area. So you're never depending on just one item to keep your business alive. Mistake number two, not optimizing the G-code. Most people think that once a model prints well, the job is done. But if you're running a 3D printing business like that, you're probably burning money with every single print. Because the biggest danger isn't visible on your screen. It's hidden inside your G-code. In the beginning, we were just happy things were printing. The model looked good, it didn't fail, so we hit print again and again and again. But here's the truth, good enough G-code is probably costing you more than you realize. At Casa Z, we had over 100 printers running daily, but we were running them like hobbies. Default slicer settings, no optimization, no custom tuning for time, material, or consistency, and we pay the price. We didn't realize that our biggest loss wasn't broken printers or return orders. It was right there, quietly hidden inside every job we thought it was fine. And here's what happened. When you don't optimize, your prints take longer than they need to. You use more filament than necessary, your failure rate goes up, and your entire operation becomes unpredictable. It's not always dramatic. It's slow, it's a leak, a silent, invisible drain on your margins day after day. And when you're printing at volume, small inefficiencies become big liabilities. The moment we started digging into our G-codes, tweaking infill, optimizing layer heights, everything changed. Print times dropped by 30%, filament consumption decreased, failures become predictable because we measure the rate. And we could calculate the price of the products. And suddenly, we could plan production with confidence. And this is even more important now that we have the multicolor printing because there's a lot of room for improvements over there as well. So we stopped guessing and started scaling. Your slicer isn't just a tool, it's your production manager, it's part of your R&D. And if you're not telling it how to work smart, you're telling it to waste your money. So yeah, if you're running a 3D printing, don't just ask, is it printing well? Ask, is it printing efficiently, reliably and profitably? because this is the key here. And that's the difference between a maker and a business. And now let's go to mistake number three, ignoring production losses. When you start printing for business, every failed print feels like a small problem, but small problems add up fast. And if you're not tracking your failures, you're not running a business. You're just hoping things to go right. There was a moment at KSSC where we were printing hundreds of products a week, printers running day in and day out. Orders coming in, packages going out. But the numbers weren't making sense. Revenue looked good, but profit wasn't following. And one of the reasons, we were not tracking the losses at all. Every failed print, 
every spaghetti mess, every nozzle clog, a vision issue, warp base, just thrown in the trash and replaced. And we told ourselves, it's part of the process. It's part of 3D printing. But here's the thing, every failure costs you. Filament, electricity, machine hours, operator time, and worst of all, your opportunity to sell something that could have worked. Now multiply that by two, three, 10, 50 printers. Then every day of the week, then every week of the month. It's not a bump, it's a hole in your bowl. And what we didn't realize is that in a production environment, your failure rate is your margin killer. Even a 10% failure rate, if you're not measuring it right, can eat a significant part of your profit. The fix isn't complex. It starts with visibility. Track everything, know your failure rate per model, per printer, or even per G-code if you have a combination of G-codes. Print your print farm like a factory, not a workshop. And that includes a planned regular maintenance routine. So if you're printing to sell, ask yourself, do you know how much you're really losing every week or are you just reprinting and moving on? Because just one failure, repeated a hundred times, can quietly sink your business. Mistake number four, scaling with more printers instead of more strategy. When sales start picking up, your first instinct is, I need more printers. But sometimes more machines just mean more problems because if your pricing isn't right, you're not scaling your business, you're just multiplying your losses. At Casa Z, we hit a point where demand exploded. It felt like a great problem to have. And our response, buy more printers, double the farm, hire more people, buy more tables, more outlet, more everything. It worked at first, but here's the mistake. We treated scale as a matter of volume, not intelligence. We assumed that growth meant printing more, but what we didn't consider was at what cost. More machines meant more maintenance, more field prints, more power consumption, more operators, and most importantly, more complexity. We were working harder, but not necessarily earning more. Our margins didn't scale with the operation, but our stress did. And here's what I wish I'd done sooner. Before expanding production, test your pricing. What happens if you increase your price by 10%? Sometimes by increasing your price by 20% and losing 5% of your orders makes you more money with less effort. You sell less, but at a higher price, so you make more money and you work a lot less. You don't need to print more. You need to make more from what you are already printing. Mistake number five, not protecting your IP. We created a best-selling product, unique, loved, and massively profitable. And then everyone started selling their own version of it. And the worst part, we couldn't do anything about it because we'd never filed for protection. When you finally reach a winning product, your first thought is usually, how do I make more of these? And that's right, as I said before. But you should also think, how do I make sure that no one else can take this from me? At Casa Z, we have developed a design that sold incredibly well. It was original, recognizable, it had personality, and for a while, we were the ones selling it. But that window didn't last long. Within months, dozens of copies started appearing on marketplaces, on social media, everywhere. They undercut the price, flooded the market, and killed the margin of our best product. And the worst part, we had zero leverage. No patent, no design registration, nothing. No legal footing. Our designs had zero protection at all. By the time we realized the damage, it was too late. The product was saturated, the market was confused, the pricing race to the bottom had already began. That experience taught me something crucial. You don't need to protect every idea at first, but as soon as you see the potential of a product, do it. When a product shows traction, you have a short window, usually six to 12 months, depending on the country, to file a protection before it's considered public domain. Even a provisional patent or a design registration can give you power. Pointing to a pen in design registration can be more than enough to make competitors back off. That protection doesn't just save the product, it gives you space to scale, raise prices, and extend the life cycle of that product. And those were the five biggest mistakes that almost killed my 3D printing business and the lessons that helped me to build something much stronger. Now I wanna hear from you. Which of these tips would you like me to dive deeper in a future video? Drop in the comments below. And if this video helped you, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notifications so you don't miss what's coming next. And hey, if you're building a 3D printing business and you want real tools to grow, check out STL Flix for more than 3,000 exclusive STL models designed to sell, and STL Academy for step-by-step -step training on modeling, pricing, branding, 3D printing, and much more. I made the mistakes, so you don't have to. See you the next time, and happy printing.